Tonight, it's the latest in a string of viral videos capturing what many feel is casual racism, burning up social media and grabbing outraged headlines. They all begin with a non-threatening encounter, then the escalating discomfort, and many ending with a phone call to police. That when I predicted that 200 years from now, if current trends continue, that there is millions of non-white immigration and that whites dare not say that they are opposed to interracial marriage, there'll be no more white people. Now, I don't want that to happen. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. But I think that I have a legitimate interest in preserving my people. I would never wish that on any other race, blacks, whites, Asians, anyone else. I don't want anyone to disappear. What I want for my people is exactly the same things that I want for every other racial group. In other words, the opportunity to develop in the way that is compatible with their heritage, their destiny, their desires, and their own unique temperament. Another incident of alleged race, racial bias at Starbucks is stirring new outrage. A black man claims he was denied access to a bathroom at a Los Angeles area store, even though a white man was given the entry code. Neither were paying customers. A doctor who was not white that did not help my kid. I would like to see a white doctor. You're telling me there's not one white doctor in this whole entire building. Yeah, well, stupid. Oh my God, well, what's the closest that you have to a white doctor? Like, speaking English. Oh, excuse me. There's other people there. So hospital is the black No, no, I stood there. The woman repeatedly demanded that a white doctor who speaks English and, quote, doesn't have brown teeth treat her son. We've obscured her face in the video to protect the identity of her son. Well, obviously, hearing something like this is not what you expect when you go uh, for a visit to the doctor. And certainly, several onlookers hearing as the woman uh, demanded to see a white doctor for her son who was having chest pains. Many of those onlookers uh, yelling back at the woman, uh, some of them saying to her, you know, you need to take him to the hospital across the street to see a doctor over there. Why don't you take him somewhere else? And all the, uh, the woman said was that she had gone and taken him to the doctor and that she wanted to see a white doctor. And that's just not fair. This shouldn't happen to anyone at all. Amu Kanute is a rising sophomore at Smith College and works here this summer teaching chemistry to high schoolers for Smith's STEM program. She was reading in the dining hall of the Tyler House dorm here Tuesday. Next thing you know, um, I see the cop walk in with a Smith employee whom I've never seen before. And um, the man asked me, uh, we were wondering why you're here. She says police told her an employee had called about a suspicious black man. She recorded video with her phone. Good, sorry. You're wondering why you were here. Oh, I was eating lunch. I'm working the summer program. Adding her own text on Instagram with a post that's prompted outrage from supporters. It just still upsets me to just talk about it because I don't even feel safe on my own campus and I'm away from home. I'm the first in my family to go to college. I'm doing this not only for me, but for my family, for my ancestors. Smith's president sent a statement apologizing and assuring the student that she belongs in all Smith's spaces. This painful incident reminds us of the ongoing legacy of racism and bias in which people of color are targeted while simply going about the business of their daily lives. Building an inclusive, diverse and sustainable community is urgent and ongoing work. What do you want to happen now? I want the identity of the caller released. I want a public apology from that caller, and I want them fired from the school. We got another police officer after I showed her my key and walked up here and tried to kick me out of my own goddamn pool. I pay $1,600 in rent.
I don't know her, and she's asking where I live. The question that you asked me was, do I live here? I said yes. Then you asked me what my address was. I showed you my key. What more of a conversation needs to be held? Am I, like seriously, what more of a conversation do I need to? I had a whole bunch of people around. But I'm saying. You didn't answer her question. I did answer her question. I did. I told her. Why do I need to give this lady who I don't know my address, if you want me? Why do I have to leave my pool? Did I? She don't live here? Do you live here? There is a sign that says that I can ask for anybody to leave. But for what? I showed you my key. I showed you my key. I should you gonna take my key out of my hand now? All right, well you're gonna give me another one. little girl was trying to sell bottled water so she could go to Disneyland. Now her story has exploded into a flood of controversy. That video of her neighbor calling the police now viewed more than a million times. Cold water, two dollars only. This morning, eight-year-old Jordan Rogers is an internet sensation for selling bottled water on the street in front of her house. This woman don't want to let a little girl sell some water. This woman is Allison Edel. This morning, she's a social media villain for calling the cops on her young neighbor. Yeah, and um, illegally selling water without a permit. We don't know what happened leading up to this video being shot. Edel, being called Permit Patty online, says she was working at home upstairs. And Jordan's sales pitch was loud and nonstop. I tried to be polite, but I was stern. And and I said, please, I'm, I'm trying to work. You're screaming, you're yelling, and people have open windows. It's a hot day. Can you please keep it down? Edel says she never confronted Jordan, just her mother, Erin Austin, who took this video. She called the police on an eight-year-old little girl. You can hide all you want. The whole world gonna see you, boo. This gentleman refuses to move his car because he supposedly does not think that I live here. When Dr. Nene Aguacha returned home to her gated townhome community in Buckhead, she was met with an unexpected roadblock. This guy has been in front of my car now for the last 10, 15 minutes. Uh, he didn't believe me. He, he kept on accusing me of trying to tailgate him. The exchange went on for about 30 minutes, despite repeated pleas for the man to move. He said, you don't belong here. I told him, this is where I live. I pointed it out to him. The man called police. When she arrived, the gentleman proceeded to <laughs> say once again that I was trespassing and didn't belong on the property and you know I said actually sir I do and I used my gate clicker to click the gate open. The man allegedly told the officer he was trying to protect the community after a rash of HVAC robberies but Dr. Aguacha thinks he was motivated by something else. I absolutely think it was racially motivated. What went through my mind was he could shoot me dead on the spot because he was trying to protect the neighborhood and the property. Remember just two months ago, this video went viral. Two black men racially profiled at a Starbucks in Philly. Starbucks eventually reached a settlement with the men, but Dr. Guacha says these incidents are more common than many people want to admit. Tense confrontation at a community pool in North Carolina. A man who was white accused of racially profiling a mother who's black. Here's ABC's Alex Perez. I'm just here with my baby, swimming. The cell phone video, now gone viral, shows Adam Bloom questioning whether Jasmine Edwards and her son are neighborhood residents and entitled to use the private community pool. Where does it say that I have to show an ID to use my pool, my own pool? IDs are not required to enter the pool, but Bloom, who is the Housing Association's pool chairman, insists and calls police. We have a resident or a non-resident that's at the pool that refuses to leave. Edwards is a resident and informs the officers that she has a key card to access the pool. We're going to shut this and, and prove to this gentleman that this turns green real quick. Turns green and it unlocks. There you go, sir. All right. All right. Perfect. The incident, just the latest in a string of disturbing episodes of white people calling the cops on innocent black people for everyday activities. A kid mowing the lawn, barbecuing in the park. Adam Bloom has since resigned from the poll committee, and his employer announced on Twitter he's been let go. I see this black gentleman with these two little white kids. So I just had a funny feeling. 
It's the 911 call that's upsetting lots of people. I said, you know these kids didn't go, why wouldn't I? The woman calls cops after she spots this man driving with two white children in the back seat. So what was Corey Lewis doing? He was babysitting his friend's kids. His video of the incident is causing outrage across America. This lady over here, she's following me. All because I got two kids in the back seat that do not look like me. This lady has took it upon herself to say that she's gonna take my plate down and call the police. The woman never let Lewis out of her sight. We then left to go get gas across the street at the gas station. She moved closer to the gas station Waited there. He just got gas, so now he's pulling away. Should I follow him? No, I recommend not following him. If I'm wrong, that's great. I'm thrilled. But if I'm not, you know, then, then these kids are okay. Even though she'd been advised not to follow Lewis, the woman did anyway. I'd like somebody to come and look at this guy to make sure that he knows these kids. Police arrived and questioned the children. Come on, I talk to him? That's crazy. And then the officer called the parents. Are you saying that because there's an African-American male driving my two white kids that he was stopped and pulled over and questioned? And he said, I'm sorry, ma'am, that's exactly what I'm saying. Their father, David Parker, is hearing the 911 call for the first time. I would be beside myself if anything happened to those kids. I have to ask you just how difficult it was for you to hear that 911 call. It all sort of looked like harassment rather than genuine concern. You leave these women alone. Get out. This no, woman is I very don't. upset. She's that. berating another shopper for screaming at two Mexican women like for this. speaking Spanish. Right. You, you don't lose. harass people like you this. Lose your All right. Kamira Trent followed the shopper down the aisle at a supermarket in Colorado and called police. I spoke with the 30 year old mom. What happened before the camera started rolling? And I hear this lady telling one of them that um, they're in America, they need to speak English, they can't speak Spanish. That's when she stepped no, in. Don't harass people. Hey. People looking at that video might ask, why would you intervene for strangers? Could have been dangerous for you. Because it was the right thing to do. In Chicago now, a woman claims a CVS drugstore manager called police on her when she tried to redeem a coupon at his store. The woman who was black took out her phone and recorded their interaction. 911 on a black customer trying to use a coupon. You can tell them her name is Camilla Hudson. I have ID and we'll share it. The manager visibly shaking while making the call. So I said, okay, why can't you accept it? Because it looks fraudulent. Police tell ABC they were informed a female was threatening staff and refusing to leave. The incident, just the latest in a string of episodes caught on camera of white people calling the cops on black people for everyday activities, like these two black men arrested at Starbucks shortly after one of them tried to use the bathroom. And CVS has apologized to Hudson and says those two employees involved in the incident won't be working in the store pending the findings of their investigation. We are hearing the other side of a story that's making national headlines. A white woman inside a downtown loft building not letting a black man inside Friday night has hit social media and gone viral. And the woman in the video says he didn't have a key fob to get in and forced his way inside. All emails from the association stating what residents should do when dealing with a situation like this. Hillary says Dorian said he was trying to get into the building as she had the door cracked as her dog went to the bathroom. And I simply asked if he lived there. Boom. After the video went viral, her company Tribeca STL fired her for racial profiling. They do not own the property where this occurred. She says she has had death threats as well. When you're called a racist, how does that make you feel? All right, protests over the police shooting death of a black man inside his own apartment in Dallas grew tense overnight. A Dallas Morning News journalist captured an officer firing what appeared to be a pepper ball gun into the crowd. More than 100 people gathered to demand justice for Botham John. The 26-year-old was shot last week by off-duty police officer Amber Geiger. Omar Villafranca is at the Dallas apartment complex where it all happened. Omar, good morning. Nora, good morning. Geiger is charged with manslaughter after what happened at this apartment complex. But demonstrators say that is not enough. Her case now heads to a grand jury where those charges could be bumped up to murder. What we believe to be 
uh, the last words of both of them, uh, Jean, which was, oh my God, why did you do that? Alice and Jean wants to know what happened to her son. I'm not satisfied that we have all the answers. There is really no reason why a mother should have to wait until the conclusion of an investigation to know what happened to that child. Can these conflicts be avoided? Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis. When it comes to people accused of everyday racism, the internet has no mercy. I'm being followed and harassed, that's what's up. With two white kids being with one black male. No, yeah. Uh, the yeah. suspicious. Doling out viral nicknames. You can film all you want. Intended to brand any perpetrator forever. I'm call the police on him for having a barbecue. Stephanie Sebi Strempel arrested for assaulting a black teen in a community pool. Get out now! Became Pool Patrol Paula. Her attorney later saying there are two sides to every story. Right. Get out! And Allison Edel, who called the police on an eight year old girl selling water now known as Permit Patty. Um, illegally selling water without a permit? Edel later saying she regrets the way she handled it. And now, just this past week, Teresa Klein became Cornerstone Carolyn. Does not grab my ass. Cornerstone Carolyn. When she accused a nine-year-old boy of groping her at this Brooklyn corner store. Surveillance footage would later prove her wrong, clearly showing it was the boy's backpack that accidentally grazed her. But outside of the store, she confronted the boy and his family, saying she's calling the police. No, I want the cops here right now. The boy, Jeremiah, terrified of going to jail, sobs outside the store. His mother, aghast. One witness, Jason Littlejohn, immediately began filming. Make her go viral. I knew something wasn't right, and then that's when I pulled out my phone and then started recording. After that, I saw little Jeremiah crying. Don't cry, little man. And that was the saddest thing of my life, to ever see a little kid like that crying. After viewing the surveillance footage, the woman apologized to the boy. But I'm sorry. But for little John and many others, sorry is not enough. I gave her the name, it's Corner Store Carolyn, and I was like, please make this go viral, you know, just. I want black people to be the best possible black people they can be. And that's not likely to be the case in a multi-culti America where every racial group is jostling for some kind of advantage over the other. I want black people to build Wakanda. I don't want black people to be in mixed with other people blaming us for what I think are the shortcomings often of blacks. I want black people to be proud and independent, just the way I want white people, Asians, Hispanics, every group to be proud and independent. And you don't get that by some kind of constant mixing in which there is nothing but conflict and tension and uh, bean counting, how many Oscars were nominated for Hispanics, how many people in the Harvard graduating class are going to be Asians this year. Diversity is a constant source of tension and conflict. And for that reason, I believe since most people are more comfortable with people like themselves, we should not stand in the way of those who wish to go their own way. I believe if blacks wish to have their own society, their own part of America, they are legitimate claimants on a piece of this land. Black people were brought here against their will. The idea that somehow white people can say, oh, no, we made a mistake when people place place back. No, that would be illegitimate, impractical, and utterly immoral. Black people have a right to be here. And I believe that they should pursue their own destiny entirely under their own steam. So first question for you, do you believe there's a problem between black and whites in America, generally speaking? Sadly, there would seem to be, and uh, it's getting more and more obvious, and it's very sad. It's very sad. And also tells you they're going to turn their FBI informants and operatives and dirty tricks people loose on, on the real media, on the libertarian media, and on the Tea Party. And it's going on hardcore. Infiltration of organizations, attacks, sabotage, dirty tricks, stuff being made up. I expect this. We're going in, folks. This is the attempted takedown of the Republic. The attempt to start a civil war, playing the people off against the police and people off against each other racially. So that whites will feel threatened inside with the establishment and the police state and departments that are trying to be good departments will feel threatened and will go under federal control and militarized control. 
And so that minorities, who are really the majority now in most areas, will see the Democratic Party as their their capo in the prison. And then the, it's, it's how they control prisons. And the UN's the warden. And they've got us all in racial gangs. And we're all in a prison together like a bunch of chumps. Right now, a third of Americans actually believe that a second civil war will happen within the next five years. One, I want to see this nation united as opposed to divided. I don't want to see a race war as Donald Trump does. Is not as fair, but it has nothing You're, to do with the color of your skin. Because you've never been black or brown in America, Trish. That's why you believe. There are still some black Americans who believe that the system is biased against them. The American system, because they're black, they don't get the same kind of shot. They don't get the same kind of fairness that whites do. What do you say to that? Is they're not necessarily wrong. I mean, there are certain people where, unfortunately, that comes into play, and I'm not saying that. I, I can relate it really very much to myself.